The following podcast contains references to the consumption of alcohol. If you are not of legal drinking age, please do not consume alcohol. Also, if you are of legal drinking age, please drink responsibly. Oracle Magic Cocktail Hour. My name is Ryan, and my favorite snow day beverage is hot chocolate. And I'm Matthew, and my favorite snow day beverage is, I think for the first time in the history of the podcast, the same as Ryan's, hot chocolate. Ooh, it's just like a classic. There's something so beautiful Mm -hmm. about like a nice cold day and a big ass mug of cocoa yeah with like a marshmallow i was gonna say do you do you do big marshmallow or little marshmallows i like a big marshmallow Mm -hmm. because i like the slower melt i feel like the little ones melt away too quickly i like i like a big marshmallow floating in it and i like the top to be a little bit fired Ooh, to make it a little roasty toasty yeah that that sounds beautiful. Are you a big marshmallow or a little marshmallow guy? I feel like I'm a little marshmallow guy. I, I'm just you're a, just a little guy. Just a little you're guy. just a little marshmallow guy. You're just a little guy. guy. That's okay. <laughs> um, but I I kind of like like the congealed mass that they eventually turn into. Mm, I get that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. I feel like the one, like, super millennial thing that I absolutely love to see at, like, any holiday event, though, is a hot chocolate bar. Ooh, have Ooh. you ever been to a place that has a hot chocolate bar? No, but it sounds great. Oh, it's so good. That's when you get, like, super fucking fancy with it. Um, I've had, I've been to some where they, like, pre-toast some, mar- like, some big marshmallows. Mm-hmm. Um... But you just, you start out with your classic cocoa, and then you just, like, put stuff in, and that's when you just, like, you just kind of go feral with it. Yeah, just however <laughs> It's just this like, I don't care just... if this tastes good, I'm dropping a whole Andy's mint in there. <laughs> Ooh. Mint and chocolate is one thing that I'm not a fan of, though, so I don't think really? I would go for that, but... I feel like peppermint is, like, a pretty common staple at a hot chocolate bar. You never, like, stirred your hot chocolate with, like, a candy cane? I'm not a, I'm not a chocolate mint guy. Are you, time, do you like chocolate and orange? I do like chocolate and orange. Okay. Yeah, one time I ate a whole peppermint patty at work and I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the mint in York is like very rough. It tastes there's like, like There's like a taste. creamy mint that's okay, but like when it's just like straight peppermint, I feel like there's like, that's a lot to handle. So mm-hmm. I get that. So maybe that's, maybe that's uh, influencing my... my my choices um but yeah do you go for like have you ever like gone super fancy and did something other than like swiss miss mix or Mm -hmm. um my yeah um we used to do like um like a step up like it the closest thing that i can think that you can buy in a store is like we would make our own version of like the abuelitas with like the cinnamon chocolate Ooh, yeah but, like, we would make it from scratch. Um, for Sounds Christmas, good. a lot of years, my sister makes her own cocoa mix. Ooh. Some um, some sister's bootleg cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> sister's too rowdy, crazy time cocoa mix. Um, <laughs> Your 3,000 rowdy boy cocoa mix. <laughs> Your 3,000 rowdy boy cocoa mix. XXX too wild. We can't handle it. We won't stop. <laughs> We can't stop. (laughs) We can't stop. Um, but, yeah. I like, I like cocoa. I feel like it's, like, enough of a staple. Like, it's the one, it's, I also just hate eggnog. I've tried so hard to like eggnog, and I just can't. So I feel like holiday drinks, it's already pretty limited, and I love a good hot tea. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I reserve those, like, that's not like a, 
wait for a snow day drink. Like, I will just have a cup of hot tea instead of, like, coffee in the morning. Yeah. Um, so I feel like snow day, it's like a treat. So that's when you get out your, like, cocoa. Mm-hmm. For sure. Do you make your Swiss Miss with milk or water? So, I prefer it with milk because it's, like, mm-hmm. a little richer. But mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm really jonesing, I'll make it with water because it, it's a little easier. Do you also not consistently keep milk in your fridge? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really go through milk that often, so I try not to buy it that often. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily always have it on hand. I found one thing that has helped me with like using milk that I purchase because, like, I can't. Like, if I bought a gallon, it would just literally go to waste there's no point in me ever buying a gallon Mm -hmm. so i buy a half gallon and then in kansas city there's like a specific milk company that like does it in glass jars that you can like return the jars and stuff Ooh, um it's called chateau milk company um they also like in like little drink like in like little cartons Mm -hmm. they also do like wild flavored milk and i i'm a strong proponent of alternative milks i love oat milk i love almond milk but when you're drinking hot cocoa you want like that rich fatty and i don't like i'm not lactose intolerant Mm -hmm. yeah but like i also like the thought of just like drinking a glass of milk makes me nauseous (laughs) (laughs) i mostly use milk for like cooking like sometimes if i'm having like a desserty type thing like if i'm having like a cookie yeah you want a little bit of milk but yeah the thought of just drinking a glass of milk makes me so not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, if I ever have to buy milk for something, I usually just buy some cereal and mm-hmm. use it. That's how I use it up. But yeah, this is our uh, cocoa podcast within a podcast <laughs> called. <laughs> we talked for seven minutes about hot cocoa, huh, buddy? <laughs> this, this is our podcast called Hit, uh, Swiss Hits and Misses. <laughs> Stay tuned for. More exciting installments, but right now, <laughs> I think we should uh, continue on to our regularly scheduled podcast. Yes. By saying that we like to have a drink and try to be succinct, and then talk about Coco for a bit. But uh, what are you drinking tonight, Ryan? Um, not Coco, but now I'm kind of thinking maybe I should switch to Coco after this. Mm-hmm. Um, I am just drinking a Blackberry Sage Quirk. Ooh. It's a classic at this point. Didn't feel like getting too fancy with it. Mm-hmm. Um it's just it's just easy peasy. Pour it in a cup and sip on it all night. What are you drinking, Matt? I am drinking a Space Camper Delta Ray again. Ooh. 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 Grip it, it and it. rip it, buddy. And rip it. A grip it and rip it. <laughs> so yeah, that's what yeah. we're drinking. That's what we're drinking. What are we talking about tonight, though? So, tonight, it's, it's in theory, the end of fall when this is coming out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe not necessarily when we're recording it. But uh, but the audience doesn't know that if I don't say it. So, <laughs> um, but we we've established the quintessential autumn playlists. We have we've set out those autumn vibes yeah. for sure. And we only we felt it was only right to mm-hmm. keep the the trend going and set out the quintessential winter playlists. Oh, yeah, we love to see it. Love to see it. Um, yeah, and I think and I think that autumn and winter have such different vibes mm-hmm. that it's like super fun. Um, what sets it apart for me is like autumn is kind of like like they build into each other. Like autumn is kind of like the descent into fall or fuck. Autumn the is like the descent into, into winter. <laughs> And then winter, you just go fucking feral. You don't go outside ever mm-hmm. <laughs> unless you absolutely have to. Um, snow is hell. Everybody's sad all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. It's bleak. 
it's the just, sun is oof. dead. <laughs> yeah, you're just sad. It's just sad. Everybody's depressed. <laughs> and I feel like you would think that you'd like, oh, Ryan, you're depressed during winter. You should do something uplifting. And I think that that's the trick. You have to play into the sadness. Just look look into the void. You just you gotta stare into that fucking void. Girls own the void and you just gotta keep looking. You cannot <laughs> back down. <laughs> um, so that's the vibe we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> that's the vibe. Just being depressed. Um, no, but I, I think it's fun. What, what sets autumn from winter apart for you as far as music goes, Matthew? So... I think in the autumn episode, if you haven't listened to it, I would recommend you go back and listen to it before listening to this one, because mm-hmm. this is a series. This is a series. We're going to um, keep doing this for the next two seasons. So I said that autumn was sad and acoustic. Mm-hmm. I think winter for me is sad and acoustic, but there's also like... That very specific synthesizer sound that's like beep boop 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 skip boop boop boop. To me, there's something extra crisp about mm-hmm. winter music. Like there has to be like when the... you listen to it, you have to feel like the cold in your lungs. You have to feel the cold in your lungs. Winter music is the feeling of coming in from outside, it's snowing, but there's a fire on and it's kind of crackling off in the corner. You take off your boots, you take off your 30 layers of clothing, Mm -hmm. leaving the one layer on underneath, and then you just kind of lay in front of the fire and drink some cocoa, and it's it's beautiful. I do, I do love a good fire. My apartment has a fireplace, which feels like a weird thing for any rental space, especially when it's like, it's like an apartment complex, it's not like something that has been turned into apartments. Mm Mm-hmm. So that means that these were in the plan. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it feels weird to have an apartment with a fireplace. And then I thought about it. It's like, my sister's apartment had a fireplace. So maybe it's not so weird. But you you speaking that truth that you just did makes me kind of want to maybe play with fire this winter. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gonna do an arson. No, I'm going to do it safely. And I know how to do a fire. A controlled my parents, arson. I've like, grown up with fireplaces. My grandparents, I was in their original in home, had a fireplace. And it mysteriously burned down through arson. Ooh. Ooh. No, well, why there hasn't uh, been... <laughs> these apartments burned down 30 years ago. <laughs> um... My parents currently have a fire, have a beautiful fireplace. It's big. It's got a large hearth. Love mm-hmm. it. Um, love to see it. Love to see it. And so, like, I know my way around a fire. I trust myself, but it's just it feels. I don't. I trust myself. I don't trust my cats. They're pretty stupid. Mm-hmm. I also don't know that I trust a fireplace in an apartment, even yeah, if it was I built I... intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> And it's weird because I remember, like, when I moved in, they were talking about, like, yeah, the first two floors have a fireplace. And I was like, well, why couldn't they do it? Like, I mean, like, I appreciate knowing that, like, the people above me can't just set a fucking fire because smoke rises. So it would take me a long time to realize, probably. Mm-hmm. But it's, I don't know. Also, I we've talked about it previously. I would rather just have the square footage that the fireplace takes up. <laughs> it's such a weird, like, jut out from the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's whatever. That's what you, renters can't be beg or can't be choosers. <laughs> renters can't be beggars, and beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> and neither can renters. But we're not talking about Ryan's <laughs> stupid apartment. We are talking about um winter vibes. Playlists. Winter vibe playlists. What went into making this playlist for you, Matthew? So, in making this playlist, Mm -hmm. I was inspired by a little thing called Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hours Autumn Vibes Playlist episode, in which (laughs) Ryan makes an unintentional triptych. (laughs) But it wasn't the triptych that inspired me. It was uh, your, your, the way you constructed yours 
in that it was like from the beginning to the end of autumn. Mm -hmm. I kind of tried to do that with my winter playlist. Nice. And we to to varying degrees of success, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I had in mind for when I made mine. Nice. But yeah, what? How did you go about creating your playlist? I kind of went a similar route again. I feel like mine starts, like, I felt like my autumn playlist really started, like, into the tip of winter, so it just kind of picks up. Mm -hmm. And then goes, and then towards the end, it, it gets a little bit more optimistic, but it's still, it's still pretty sad. I feel like what we're going to learn is that Ryan just has depression, and so all seasons are sad seasons. <laughs> Maybe. I was about to say maybe the depression was the friends we made along the way, but that's too sad of a sentence. <laughs> that feels maybe like the a yes. playlists were the depression we noticed along the way. <laughs> that that feels better. Maybe the friendship was the therapist we met along the way. <laughs> oh. 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 Twenty twenty two, baby, it's the year <laughs> of personal growth. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Um. So no, I I kind of did try to fall because I feel like for. I feel like if you're doing, like, a seasonal playlist, like, there is kind of that build-up. It's not, like, one note all season. Um, I definitely played into, like, Void-esque feelings. Um, I also can tell you that, um... So I've listened through your playlist, like, once. I haven't listened through it a whole bunch. I kind of want to be a little bit surprised with, like, you're not surprised, but, like... But, like, I know what you mean. I'm kind I don't of the same be too way with familiar yours. with your list. Yeah. Um but there is one artist that I know <laughs> is featured on both <laughs> because they are quintessential winter. Like that's the time you listen to them. Mhm. Mm and it's sad white boy shit, but I love it and it is Bonavere. <laughs> yes. Quintessential <laughs> Which I think is maybe or, how winter. both of our playlists start? Question mark. My Bon Iver song is in like the back half. Oh, ooh, mine's mine starts off heavy. Cause um, I did forget I did kind of set mine to where it's like the first half isn't super super depressing, mm -hmm. but you hit the middle and then the back half is just like oh no the feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I was get my you. like structure. Cool, 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 cool. So do you want to get into it? What, what's your number sure. one? What's your first song in the playlist, Matthew? One second. I'm so sorry. How long is your playlist? Uh, My playlist is like 15 songs. Okay. So no, how, how many, like, time-wise? Uh, like an hour, give or take. Yeah. So, my playlist is the following. Flume by Bon Iver, Lump Sum by Bon Iver, Skinny Love you liar! by Bon Iver. Just kidding. That's just for <laughs> Emma forever ago. That was the goof. Um, okay, for reals. No goofs. No goofs. Uh, my Winter Vibes playlist starts out with 121712 12 by the Decemberists. Not just because it's a date in December, but also because it's kind of folky and it kind of almost fits in with autumn. Uh -huh. So it kind of, it leans you in. And then we go into Phaser Days' Jennifer. Nowhere Nothing by Ocean Eater. Uh, Your Name by an artist that I've never actually heard pronounced, but I believe it's Burnick? But okay. she's french canadian so i don't know that i'm pronouncing that right so i'm sorry um and then sunlight by radical face indians never die by black belt eagle scout mm -hmm. white winter hymnal by fleet foxes two on the nose <laughs> <laughs> uh stroms by sigur Ross. if you can't tell this is the part where the feels hit <laughs> yeah anytime matthew Picks a cigar off song. It's, it's about to yikes. get real depressing. <laughs> we're about to look through some yearbooks and we're too drunk. Um, <laughs> and then Restacks by Bon Iver. 
Mm-hmm. Classic. Passenger by Lisa Hannigan. Uh, Bed in the River by Joan Shelley. Should have known better. By Sifjan Stevens. S- 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 John. I once again don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Sifjan Stevens. Yeah. Uh, seasonal affective disorder by Squirrel Flower, also on the nose. Uh, and then this is where like, this is this is the part where the feels really like hit you. Okay. It's the climactic. It's hard to find by the National. Okay. And then to round it all out, just a little little peak of the end of winter is "Here Comes the Sun" by the Beatles. Once again, on the nose. I know that I liked it because I feel like that is such a good like transition from winter into spring. Mm-hmm. Like if I had to make like a soundtrack. If I had to year. make Garden State about <laughs> <laughs> about winter. <laughs> oh man! So I guess what I'm trying to say is this is like if Garden State was set during the winter, this would be the soundtrack. Okay. So basically what I'm saying, what you're saying is that we are remaking Garden State. What I'm saying is I'm Zach Braff. I don't know <laughs> that I really want to say that, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, what, let's, let's dig into your playlist a little bit. Okay. So like I said, my playlist is like, it's mostly, I feel like I I went really heavy into like the kind of sadder, like sad boy bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I start out strong with what I consider to be a quintessential winter song, and that is Michigan by Bon Iver. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. I don't know if we just talked about it together or if we talked about it on the podcast, but I have a very specific, very strong memory. Every time I hear that song, I get transported to a very specific spot on campus where we went to college mm-hmm. in the middle of winter, and it's beautiful, and it's good, and I am here for it. So it's kind of like, it's like happy memory, but also like... The overarching sadness of winter. That sort of like sad nostalgia. Mel- yes. Melancholy, maybe. For sure. Um, and then this one's probably a little out of left field. And I don't know, like the soundtrack for Where the Wild Things Are. I feel like it works, though. Is so good. and so. <laughs> I mean, it's Karen O, so it's gonna be good. Yeah, um, but absolutely loved it. And so I picked Hideaway by Karen O and the Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, which is featured on the uh, Where the Wild Things Are soundtrack. The Spike, Spike Jones classic. Yeah. Um, and then we switch into Forever and Always by Zeph. I tried to like pick artists that I don't listen to all the time this time. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of these, like they're not like artists that I listen to a lot, but these are songs that I listen to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that makes like these are like the highlights of songs that I listen yeah. to. I do feel like there are some, like, repeat artists from your Autumn playlist, but they're different songs, which I kind of appreciate. Yeah. Um, Not spoiling that's because the next I song. don't have, like, a wild... Like, I, I'm i pretty insular with the music that I listen to, and it takes a lot for me to, like, listen to a new artist. That's um, Yeah, because next we're going into Cold by Nova Amore, which is probably a little on the nose for winter, but it's fine. And then... Who makes their playlist on the nose? <laughs> How gauche. And then I feel like to switch it into like the like kind of, I feel like another big part of winter is kind of like the want and like the nostalgia for like brighter, better times. Mm-hmm. So I did pick I Saw You in a Dream by the Japanese House. Love and then we take it. a funky diversion with Lord <laughs> and her song Writer in the Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melodrama is a great album. You will not convince me otherwise. Love the and cover. Then, yeah, the cover's great. Um, and then we go into Slackjaw by Sylvan Esso. Um, mm-hmm. I also will let the listeners know that I ended up doing 18 songs instead of 15. Um, oh, I just, scandalous. I'm gay and I can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> and counting is technically math, so fight me. Um, and then we get into Savior Complex by Phoebe Bridgers. Mm-hmm. Moon Begins by Florist, which is kind of like the halfway point, which is the halfway point. And I feel like this is kind of like, it's like hinting at a brighter moment. Like, it's like a little bit, like, it's like a dip. Like, the moon is beginning to shine a little brighter. Yeah. 
be there a little different in a different capacity. A little foreshadowing. And then we just go straight into like 2012 Ryan sad as shit. <laughs> <laughs> With I go to the barn because I like the by oh, Amanda you Forces. Did, you did miss I exist, I exist, I exist by flat sound. Oh fuck, I did. Okay, yeah. Um, so like I, know after, that, like, you, I know that you were real excited about I like to I go was, to the barn. I was real excited. Again, <laughs> can't count in my head. 11 came after 9. Not my fault. <laughs> Counting yeah. is so hard. Um, okay. So yeah, we so we kind of build into the sadness a little bit then with I exist, I exist, I exist. Because I feel like you get really numb during winter and you kind of ha- like you have to have that reminder of like, I'm here, I'm alive, I exist, mm-hmm. I exist, I exist. And then we go straight into <laughs> Ryan's, it's 2012 and Ryan's sad. I go to the barn because I like the by Band of Horses. Um, and then we go into, even if it's a lie, the demo version. Don't ask me if it, don't tell me if it's different from the <laughs> actual. I don't know what the difference is. I don't care. This is the version I listen to. This is the version I like. Fight me. <laughs> And that's by um, Matt Maltese. Wow, winter just makes me want to rumble, apparently. Um, And then I try to keep multiple artists off the same playlist, but I feel like you can't tell me what to do. So I did put Phoebe Bridgers on here twice with You Missed My Heart. I think you did this with Phoebe Bridgers on the (laughs) Autumn playlist, too. (laughs) Probably. I'm nothing. It's tradition at this point. (laughs) Are there two good spring Phoebe Bridger songs? Yeah, there are. Garden songs. Of course exist. there are. Who am I kidding? <laughs> um, and then from me to the moon, a lot of moon imagery. I do spend a lot of time pining after the moon during winter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then She Lays Down by the 1975. Again, kind of like not, they're not a band I usually listen to. Like, I don't hate the 1975, but I feel like they're a little... A little too on the nose. A little too on the nose sometimes. And then to kind of like bring us back into like, okay, things are getting a little bit better. Things are livening up a bit. I did Lavender Blood by Fox Academy. Mm -hmm. And then I think Matthew hates this next song, but I like it. (laughs) I'm not, I don't don't know that hate is the right word. It's just, I don't, I wouldn't seek it out to listen to it. Um, I did pick Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. I feel like it's a good like transitionary Um, and hint, 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 there will probably be another Harry Styles song (laughs) in summer. (laughs) I don't know why, but I feel like there's going to be another Harry Styles song coming up. There there might be more. Ryan might listen to Harry Styles songs. I I don't know what it is, but (laughs) something's something's telling me there might be another one. Um, and then to finish it off, I did Old Lovers in Dressing Rooms by Keaton Henson. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um. I might this okay. This sentence mm-hmm. is going to be a a test of test of our friendship. Okay. I think maybe, but I feel like the Keaton Henson song is a Counting Crow song. It sounds exactly like the Counting Crows to me. <laughs> no. Just listen, no. listen, listen to it a little bit, and tell me it's not a Counting Crow song. It doesn't. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> what counting? Okay. Is it a counting? Like, is it just like a cover of fucking Counting Crow song? And I didn't realize no, it. No, I, I think okay. he sounds like the Counting Crows guy to me. He doesn't sound like Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones and me. Don't do this to me. No, he doesn't sound like counting. Don't. Okay, don't he doesn't. It. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> this never happened. This never. I st- we're still friends, but stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Listen, it's I'm a good joke. Thin ice. <laughs> it's a great joke, even. But I'm gonna need you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Can't handle this. <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> So, um, yeah, 
What are your like overall thoughts of my playlist? Did you get a chance to listen to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've listened to it once, kind of like you with mine. Um, I th- I think it it encapul- encapsulates encapsulates it it. What's a word that is an encapul- that encapsulates that's easy to say? <laughs> um, it it feels like winter to me, in a good way. Um, there are definitely some songs on here that I had never heard that I was like, ooh, I kind of like this one. Yeah. Like, from from Me, The Moon, when that started, I was like, oh, this is, this is good. Um, yeah. Good. And I feel like Hideaway by Karen Owen and the Kids, I feel like I've heard that somewhere else recently, too. So it feels like Karen Owen is just kind of sneaking into my life in a good way at mm-hmm. this point. I mean, you got... You got Bon Iver in there. That's I feel must. like you can't have a winter play without Bon Iver. Like, we've both talked about before how, like, Bon Iver, like, the season of Bon Iver is winter. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can make arguments for him in other seasons, but the one that he fits into best mm-hmm. is, winter. is winter. Yeah. He's he's I, a cold, sad boy. I think we established Grouper is autumn, Bon Iver is winter. Mm-hmm. Um... And neither of us had grouper in winter because they're autumn. Obviously. <laughs> um, you did go for I Go to the Barn because I like the, which feels like a personal attack, but I will Why accept it. Why does it feel like a personal attack? Because <laughs> it makes me sad. <laughs> it does. You put Sigur Ross. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. What? I almost put Infinite Arms on mine. Or no, not Infinite Arms. Uh, Evening Kitchen. That one doesn't like, feel as winter to me, though. That's why I was like, I'm going to save this for, like, summer. <laughs> yeah, like, that feels like a summer, like, your fling just got wrecked, and you're not. Mm-hmm. You're having to prepare for the <laughs> the autumn <laughs> by you're yourself. Drinking, <laughs> you're drinking wine while lying on your kitchen floor, wondering <laughs> why, <laughs> why this has all happened. Oh, uh, man. But yeah, I feel like overall yours is, is peak winter. Uh. What do you feel about mine? Uh, I feel like yours also had some songs that like I don't listen to often. Mm-hmm. Um, but great. And also, I feel like yours had a lot of like nostalgic moments in it. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't listened to the National in a hot minute, and so like having that, it like kind of like set me to like, oh shit, I should listen to the National more. <laughs> Except you shouldn't, because it's the same as Sigur Rós, where you're like you need to be in a good headspace. <laughs> To listen to the national <laughs> you need to be in a good headspace so you can ruin that headspace <laughs> yeah um the nat that specifically that album of the national i have a very vivid winter memory of mm-hmm. which is um my sister had that album on cd and i had borrowed it and uh there was one evening where i was driving home from school from college because i was a commuter baby <laughs> and uh I was listening to that album and my car broke down halfway. So I was just kind of like on the side of the road listening to the national and my car was dead waiting for my parents to get there oh. and just being like this of course this happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I don't know. It do you know there's a like S curve south of Asbury? Mhm. It was there. So Ooh. it's like people couldn't see me and they were like speeding by me and i was like this is how i die (laughs) this is it (laughs) but i didn't die but you didn't you survived yeah um yeah i feel like yours definitely hit like nostalgia points with like december is another classic like Mm -hmm. it's 2012 ryan is sad (laughs) music um i was surprised you put a fleet box of songs on there just because like i didn't peg you for a fleet foxes guy i definitely went through like a folk phase okay in high school and fleet foxes was in that rotation with like mumford and sons and decemberists yeah i I mean i definitely get it but i don't know that i've heard like anything after this album that i have on here from them yeah but there was definitely a moment in time where it was like fleet foxes rule um I will say that both of us did 
better, in my opinion, at sticking to the prompt. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Like, I feel like both of our autumn playlists felt a little bit more all over the place. And these definitely feel more focused and more firmly winter. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just character growth, baby. That's just character growth. We're just getting better at playlists. Because it's something we've talked about before. Like, we've made playlists. That, like, we've learned the Spotify function recently. And the vibe definitely kind of gets away from us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like I feel like we're sticking, like we're getting better. So I'm excited to see like where we go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, that'll definitely be interesting. I am kind of nervous about spring though, because I'm not sure what spring vibe is. <laughs> so that's something we're gonna have to discover together. We're gonna. It's, there's gonna be growing pains. We're gonna have fun. Do we want to do a quick hydration station? Sure. Hell yeah. Hello, and welcome to Hydration Station, where this time Matthew's not going to jug- uh, chug a whole <laughs> bottle of water, because <laughs> that was bad, if you remember a couple episodes ago. Quite a few episodes ago, I feel like. At least three. <laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, take a drink of water, stay hydrated, drink responsibly. You know the shtick. Stay hydrated, but not too hydrated, because too hydrated is still bad. Yes. Ah, water. And we're waiting while it's frozen. Oh, is it? You're not frozen on my end. And it's back. You did not freeze even a little bit on my end, bud. You froze for a bit. But oh, luckily no. it was during Hydration Station, the yeah. part of the show where we freeze for a little bit because Matthew's internet <laughs> is struggling. Okay, and that was Hydration Station. That was Hydration Station. So Matthew, do you think mm-hmm. that there's anything that my playlist is missing? Um, I feel like your playlist... Meets the brief of, like, the sad acoustic winter. But I think what it's, what it's maybe missing a little bit of is the the sparkly synthesizer. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I get it. That's, like, in my mind, sparkly synthesizers, like, snow is falling. It's, there are Christmas lights. We're in a gazebo. Yeah. Iron and Wine is playing. Oh, wait, no, that's Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Um, I do. Like, there's, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I stuck with, like, the acoustic note. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, it, it, it hits winter. Is there anything that mine is missing, in your opinion? I feel like a lot of your songs, like, they definitely give cool vibes, but they don't give, like, that, and some of them, they don't give, like, that crisp, like, you know, like, Mm -hmm. when, like, your air, where, like, your lungs get kind of, like, hurt from the cold vibe, like. Yeah. We're getting cool, we're getting close, but we're not quite at that, like, it's negative. Not (laughs) hypothermia. 10 degrees and it hurts to breathe. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um... You definitely do really well with, like, the sad and, like, the nostalgia aspect of winter. You, like, Mm -hmm. knock out of the park, chef's kiss, perfect. If there's one thing everybody knows about me, it's I'm very nostalgic. (laughs) I like triptychs and I'm very nostalgic. I like triptychs and I'm very nostalgic. What song would you uh, skip on my playlist? Um, so... Or songs, if there are several. I think, surprising no one, it's probably going to be Sign of the Times. Yeah. I figured it'd be I mean, the Harry Styles song. Even, even not taking into account Harry Styles, I don't... It it doesn't feel completely winter to me. I get that. I feel but like it's yeah. definitely his most winter song. That's fair. It's the Thursday. It's the Thursday of Harry Styles songs. No, don't do that. <laughs> Thursday is the best day of the week. <laughs> um, is there anything that you would cut from my playlist? 
I would cut the Sigur Ross song just because I'm rarely in the headspace to hear a Sigur Ross song. <laughs> but it, it's pivotal to the plot. It's the one that hits you right in the feels. I know, but sometimes I need to not be crying. <laughs> That's and fair. so just for that purely <laughs> but no i That's feel fair. like i feel like it's pretty close to like a no skips like i i'm really happy with the playlist that you created mm-hmm. for sure what else did we talk about in the autumn playlist episode I don't know what. So you said that you're you're nervous about spring because you don't know what the vibe is. Do we want to kind of like figure out that vibe? Sure. Yeah. Let's let's nail down a spring vibe. Let's so my gut reaction <laughs> is like a a chaotic vibe mm-hmm. of like. We've been cooped up all winter, but also the weather is buck wild, sort of vibe. Yeah. But but what do you what do you think for spring? I think spring is like inherently optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it's like optimistic but with like a hint of danger. Cause like I feel like spring weather, especially in the Midwest, can get just buck wild, like you said. Mm-hmm. So it's like cautious optimism no i listen i love That's you fair. but you need to stay close okay <laughs> sorry my cat was um petting my face menacingly <laughs> and has been a goblin maybe that's the vibe <laughs> the goblin yeah. goblin king yeah just full you just go full feral you finally feel good because you see the sun after months <laughs> and you just turn into an absolute goblin that's fair. I like that vibe. Yeah. Um. So, I think it's time for final thoughts on okay. Winter Vibes playlists. So, hell yeah. What are your final thoughts? I think we're both understanding the prompt better, which is great. Um, I'm mm-hmm. excited to see where we go, even though we don't quite have the vibe nailed down for spring. I think between now and then we'll get it Mm -hmm. Um, we got some time to think about it we got some time we got a bit of time um at least days (laughs) (laughs) um i think this winter we're gonna be real sad boys and i think that that's okay sometimes you just gotta let it out sometimes you just gotta be sad what about you matt what are your final thoughts i would agree that we were able to stick to the vibe a little better i think maybe our vibe just is winter sad boy (laughs) (laughs) that might just be our whole thing (laughs) that might be why we were able to stick to it so well Mm -hmm. but yeah i feel like we did we did the lord's work with this one i don't like that i said that but that's what i said so we did lord work we did lord's work yeah lord 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 yeah um but yeah we did lord's work with this one it was it was good it 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 met the brief. And that's oh, yeah. sometimes the best compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. So this has been a rhetorical magic cocktail hour. Hell yeah. If you wish to follow us on the socials of medias, mm-hmm. uh, we are at RM. Nope. We rhetorical are at magic, rhetorical baby. magic. I am at RMCH Matt, which is what I was confusing it with. And I'm at um, Queer Mothra. But yeah, um, be good to one another. Mm-hmm. Listen to some sad winter music. Yes, always. And like we say at the end of every episode. Ooh. Harmonies, oh my god. Ooh. Ooh.
So, so do we want to do our little podcast death moment and kind of like run through? Actually, first, cut that. Flip it and reverse it. What see, went see, into see, making see, this? Yep, yep. 